I'm just doing this quick so I can get to the field. I put on uh, I put on two wheels. I did five bearings in these closing wheels, and I did two opener blades bearing kits. We'll rebuild it this summer. I'll have all the videos on that because there's kind of a neat it's a neat row unit. Uh, I got it jacked up. I did my 20 revolutions. I went off the chart and thought I had it close, but it's way too high. Um, I might try it again, but the mix, that has to be about the most colorful, colorful mix you can get. So what we have is orchard grass, some latch perennial, uh, lacta perennial rye grass, brome grass, Kentucky bluegrass, Timothy, and, uh, fescue in that mix and a bulk of the mix is a bmr pearl millet bmr uh, sorghum sedan and then a touch of faba beans uh, cow peas and some rye grass so it's it's a majority of that by weight uh, by volume a couple of these bags was almost the same volume um, so i'll drop the rate quite a bit hook my hoses back up and uh We'll make sure seed came out of every opener, just in case an opener happens to be plugged with mice or gunk, and then uh, we'll get the tractor and get going. Well, it's kind of working. It's actually working. Well, I think, I was behind it scratching for seeds, and uh, all the little grass seeds, you can't find them in the soil, at least I can't see them. But the purples and the greens and the big pea, them seeds, you can see pretty easy. Grab some dry manure for the wife's garden. We're, uh, I'll get a couple videos of soil health, the garden edition. So I'm just trying to get as much dry stuff as I can. Cool. There we go. Now I'll back that up and just dump it on the back of the wood tun. And uh, drive it home, I guess. I took the little dozer and uh, cleaned up the manure. All that bedding pack, that pen pack from the winter. I cleaned all that pack. So I took the teeth and just kind of kept comb in the pile to break it apart and kind of shred it and then start a new a new bedding pack for the summer and when the rye comes off behind the barn we'll we'll put all this manure out on that field all right well we're getting spraying done anyhow change of plans i'll have a little segment to do for prepping the planter my ten thousand dollar camera died and i don't have a sprayer pack with me a battery pack i mean and so i just loaded a guidance line from last year and i'm following that you can see it's overlapping that's because it that's just how guidance lines work you get going you know and then uh yeah so we'll get this burnt down and uh couple quarts around up to the acre to burn this field down and then we'll get barley going out here and uh, see how that goes I'm glad I didn't have the barley in the ground any sooner it probably would have been froze off last week In that Terra Star C, it, it really holds. It holds the line really well. 
they're around three feet, just under three feet. Gives a good pattern for them tips. I adjust them booms a little bit. The tip, the boom dives down just a little bit out there. And there's some stops that I can adjust. I'll have to do that. So the plan is I'll get this field burnt tonight. This we're just under 40, then I'll go across the road to the 100, get the perimeter and spray off what I have in my tank on that field, go home, get the grain drill, fill the grain drill up, and bring it back and then use the monitor to help me do a good job calibrating on the grain drill. And uh, so then I know how to, so then we know that it's calibrated, you know. I made it to the big field and uh, Create the boundary. You can see where see where we end up. You can see you just you kind of farm up to the to the swamps and stuff. It's funny how it's just good ground and then swamp. Black black gumbo in some of this stuff. Keep out of the fence there. There's a I don't know how everybody's area is, but the difference of grasses kind of tell you where to go, where not to go. Normally when it looks like this, that's a typical wet spot. I don't know. Almost back home. A guy would have to own a dirt moving company to drain all this stuff to make a square field that isn't worth it. At the price of commodities right now, it's it's more valuable just leaving it as a stupid water hole for the ducks than it is to try and spend any energy to drain it. There's a little hole out here. You see the grass change. We'll circle that hole. No sense being in there. Oh yeah. Sun's going down fast. The tires turn up shiny. That's not good. Save the boundary. Oh, wow, the boundary is saved. Is it going to be 75 acres? 98.95. That's a nice field. That's kind of the what it looks like. Now we'll go snap a snap a guidance line somewhere and call her good. So I think what I'm going to do is enter a 270 degree check that snaps the line. <clears throat> when we get to the other end, then we'll come back on that line and see how that goes. Is it... Uh, -da 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 -da. Well, that should be pretty good. Did 23 acres just to go around the perimeter. 
I guess I'll be able to make one pass up and then be done. Ah, I didn't even pay attention to that. It's pretty. It's pretty out here. Kind of hard with the sun. I'm trying to create a shadow. But we'll kind of go along that pass in and out. That outside pass because the telephone poles is going to move in and out. We're just making a square pass. So then from this pass on, we'll have our guidance of the sprayer width. And so we just need to make a straight edge, basically. Works pretty good. I like it. I like that. So I didn't have to go to one end and snap an A-line and, and drop a pin and come to the other end of the field and drop a dot. You can see gaps in there. That's where we'll move in and out. Like that. So, yeah, 